from the studios of the Performance Motorsports Network, bringing you the fastest 60 minutes in racing. It's Burning Rubber Radio. Burning Rubber, baby. 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 Now, here are your hosts. I know what the tradition is. You don't even have to explain it. And here it is. Burning Rubber, baby. Woo, burning Rubber, baby. Woo, hey, hey, man. It is the beginning of NASCAR, folks. Yes, it is the kickoff of Speed Week's edition of Burning Rubber Radio. I am Andy DeLay, alongside my best old fat buddy, Charles Robinson. How are you doing tonight, buddy? Doing fantastic, man. Two weeks in a row, I managed to get a pass for my indentured servant. <laughs> Well, that's great. Pretty soon you'll be doing other duties elsewhere, and that's not meant to be a nasty type thing. And, of course, behind the uh, board pack there, we have the one and only Bob Steele. What's up, brother? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm uh, dialing in uh, the Starship Enterprise. Uh, uh, how you doing, guys? <laughs> oh, man, I'm doing good. Hey, hey, you know what, guys? Really quick, I want to uh, say hello and howdy to all of the new listeners we have out there on WWXL 1450 AM in Manchester, Kentucky. Welcome to Burning Rubber Radio, and it's good to be back on the airwaves in the state of Kentucky or Commonwealth. Anyway, Charles, buddy, we got a bunch of cool stuff we're going to talk about this evening. Of course, it's Speed Week, so we're going to talk NASCAR, we're going to talk Sprint Cup nationwide. And we're going to talk about the truck series and the drivers, where they're going and what they're doing. But tonight, Charles, we've got a really cool um, guest. We have Grant Enfinger. And in case you all don't know who that is, folks, Grant just won the ARCA race at Daytona here uh, last week. So that ought to be pretty cool. Get to celebrate with him. You looking forward to it, Charles? I'm always looking forward to it. And of course, Grant is a friend of the show. You know, we've talked to him, you know, several times in the past. You know, a good young kid, got a lot of talent. And for what he done out there, of course, in the Arca race, man, it was just it was just awesome. He just went out there and won it. Yeah, and and it wasn't easy because Arca, the officials, they were on a tear this past week. Disqualified five of the the top five actually uh, cars in qualifying going through post uh, tech. Anyway, we'll talk more about that, folks. Hang out. We'll be back with more burning rubber radio right after this. Hi, I'm Mickey for Bed Bug Detection Services. Bed Bug Detection Services rescues dogs from the Humane Society and the SPCA, then trains them at the Florida Canine Academy. We then pair them up with a handler where they will spend the rest of their lives in a happy family home working in the community. We want to rescue our second dog, but we cannot do it without your help. We are fundraising to bring home our next canine. Please go to bbds.us, that's bbds.us, and do your part in helping us rescue another dog. bbds.us will give life, home, and a meaning to another dog. bbds.us. With every donation, you will receive a signed postcard from our current bed bug detection dog, Rescue Lily. Go to bbds.us. And thank you. Shopping around for your racing gear, driving from store to store only to find they don't have what you want? Barter's Racing Collectibles on Black Gap Road in Fayetteville, Pennsylvania has it all. The hottest NASCAR, IRL, and NHRA diecast, t-shirts, jackets, flags, and more. Everything racing. Stop by or check out their website, www.partnersracing.com, or call 717-352-2782. You'll be surprised at the selection, prices, and friendly client service. UPS, FedEx, and USPS shipping available. Farner's Racing Collectibles, www.farnersracing.com or call 717-352-2787. Farner's Racing Collectibles, where racing comes alive. Tincher Williams Chevrolet Buick GMC is your Lexington, Kentucky, and Corbin Chevy Buick and GMC authority. From pre-owned to the newest models, Tincher Williams is the only place to shop in the Lexington area. Check out their website for your next new or pre-owned vehicle, www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. All of the full-line inventory of in-stock and on-order Buicks, GMC trucks, and Chevrolets are right there online. 
Plus, you can check out what's hot at Tincher Williams on the homepage. Schedule your service appointment. Browse the inventory. Look for Tincher Williams specials. Check out your financing options. See what GM incentives are being offered for your vehicle. You can even shop for new tires at their convenient online tire store and get directions from wherever you are right there. It's all online at www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. That's Tincher Williams Chevrolet Buick GMC, located in London, Kentucky. Your Lexington and Corbin Chevy Buick and GMC Authority. You're listening to Burning Rubber Radio. Now back to the Burning Rubber Radio crew and the guy that thinks someone actually cares that he drove in the Slammer Series. Yeah, yeah, and I did. This is Andy DeLay. We are back with Burning Rubber Radio. I'm alongside Charles Robinson, and we both rode and drove, I guess you could say that, Charles, at uh, a Corbin Speedway in Corbin, Kentucky. Anyway, folks, it is time for the iRacing.com segment of the show and iRacing.com. Of course, folks, sponsors and brings to you Burning Rubber Radio on a weekly basis. And if you all out there wonder what iRacing is and want to give iRacing a try, it's a computer simulation that all the drivers use that you know of that you watch on TV. And if you want to try it, go to the Burning Rubber Radio Facebook page, ask us for a free trial, and we give you three months. Charles, you've been behind the wheel this week? Oh, of course I've been behind the wheel. And of course, you know, I've been kind of dabbling a little bit with some of the different cars. And of course, told, told everybody last week, I learned a little trick on the setups. Well, I also ne- learned another little trick. Well, let's hear it. It's called watch the tools. <laughs> the tools driving the cars on the track or the, t- <laughs> the- <laughs> what tools are you talking about? Well, let's talk about the tools that get out there. You know, guys, I mean, I know it's a simulation. Everybody says, hey, it's a game, you know, but you got some guys that are running out there. You know, Class A will run a Legends race, you know, and you can run them door to door, side to side, back and forth. You don't have to worry about being wrecked. You don't have to worry about being took out. Well, it always seems that every race that I gain my I rating and I also gain my NPR, there's always that race afterwards that I say I'm going to go race, and then next thing you know, boom, it's just destroyed. Uh. So, long story short, you know, I've been running a lot of legends in the in the street stocks. You know, those those are actually becoming my favorite series because they're easy to set up, great for the beginner, something that you can get out there and actually have fun with, and it doesn't matter if you run the fastest or the slowest or whatever, you can still have a lot of fun with these cars. The good thing about the Legends is they have the Advanced Series where you can actually get in there and play with the setups, hence learning about, you know, shot collar offset, playing with the stagger a little bit to get the car to roll through the centers and stuff. Well, they have the Legends this week actually at uh, USA International, one of my favorite tracks again, by the way. Oh, I've, yes. Awesome. I, I love USA, and I've always loved it no matter what I've drove there because it's it's kind of a, the same in the corners, but it's different how you approach it, how you hit the angle, how you roll through the centers, and how you come off the corners because if you're not careful, you can spin out or you'll go straight to the wall, either one. Long story short, you know, I've run a couple races and legend races there. I started in, uh, I think, eighth place. I came back up to third place. And, of course, a tool took a bunch of the leaders out. And, of course, that caught my back end, tore my car up a little bit. And I actually ended up getting black flag for damage and couldn't finish the race in my position. I didn't get scored anymore. I recovered the next race and came back and finished second. I thought, great. So I fired it up again this afternoon. Same thing. We got a bunch of tools. <laughs> That's our keyword, folks. You know, in all capital letters, T-O-O-L-S. Yeah. That you've got a group of four cars running hundreds of a second apart from each other, going into the corners side by side, coming off the corner side by side, gaining an inch, losing an inch. That's what it was like in this race for about probably about 10 laps of a 40 lap feature. And you get one guy that comes out of the pit lane straight up in the middle of the track, right where he's not supposed to, instead of coming out in the back stretch, takes out two of the front leaders, catches me and the car behind me. Luckily I got hit in the side, so it didn't damage anything. So I went on, but it still counts as an incident. You got to love the tools. You got to (laughs) love the tools, hate the tools. Sometimes tools are your friend. Sometimes they're your enemy. That's right, buddy. Hey, real quick, Charles, uh, before we got some time here, I got to congratulate the number 17 of Josh Sprock. You folks live, listening over there in uh, uh, Manchester, Kentucky, you may have heard this as a local up there in Kentucky. Josh Sprock, he won the inaugural uh, iRacing.com truck series race we had here in the iRacing.com Burning Rubber Radio iRacing League. He won at Daytona. Folks, if you want to try it out, go over there and join the league. It's free. 
And uh, on iRacing, look us up, and you guys can come race with us here at Burning Rubber Radio. But listen, folks, right now we have somebody that's all ready to go and tell us about Daytona and the win in the Arca Series. We have Grant Enfinger ready to go, but we're going to talk to him right after these messages here on Burning Rubber, baby. If you're a gearhead, you probably go online to those hot rod superstores drooling over the chrome and speed goodies until you find just the right item for your muscle car, tuner car, truck. But what do you do when it comes to fixing the mom mobile? If you're like most do-it-yourselfers, you head to the strip all parts store and talk to the do you want fries with that kid behind the counter. Hold on, Bunky! Did you stop to think where those chain stores are getting the parts that you're installing in the vehicle that's used to transport your family everywhere? They get the cheapest suppliers they can find to sell you the parts at bargain prices. Their limited lifetime warranties? What a joke! Remember the last time Mom's car broke down? You heard about that one for weeks. Don't take that chance again. Excelsior Racing has the quality parts you need for your family vehicle. Parts that you can install knowing you're getting the best for your family. Excelsior Racing. Quality parts. Personalized service. Affordable pricing. Fast to you direct. Excelsior Racing. Online at ExcelsiorRacing.com or call 502-909-2034. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. Hi, this is Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. Motorsports sales professionals. Performance Motorsports is looking to build a team of experienced media sales professionals to represent our programming to the industry's top companies, magazines, and racing series. If you have motorsports sales or marketing experience, know how to work with agencies, understand social media, and are incredibly creative when it comes to working with clients and promotions, then we want to hear from you. Top performers are richly rewarded. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. You're listening to Burning Rubber Radio. And now the guy that traded paint at Talladega. Okay, I'll grant you a gallon of purple for a can of chartreuse. And he ain't wrapped too tight. Here's Andy DeLay and the Burning Rubber Radio crew. Hey, hey, welcome back to Burning Rubber Radio, everybody. Andy DeLay here along beside Charles Robinson and the man Bob Steele behind the board. Uh, Charles, I love that. He thought that I was going to bring Grant in before the break over there, and he's over there waving and jumping up and down and stuff. But anyway, folks, we have the winner of the Daytona ARCA race, Grant Enfinger. He's with us. How are you doing tonight, Grant? <laughs> doing great. Doing great. How are y'all? Man, we're doing really good, man. I'd like I love the victory lane there, and uh, and the the whole arc event this 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 week has had its ups and downs for everyone. It seemed like. Yeah, I tell you what, it, it's it's always uh, it's always a surprise whenever you go to Talladega or Day, Tony. You, you, you never know what's going to happen. Well, there's no doubt, and of course, Andy doesn't know what's going to happen by the time he walks to the door and comes back in. But that's beside the point. <laughs> But I tell you what, Grant, you know, you laid the smack down on them out there, buddy. And I tell you what, tell us a little bit about, you know, the race, you know, how it was, you know, tell us a little bit about, about your team, you know, tell us a few things about it. I tell you what, I, the, the team, first and foremost, Team BCR, which is uh, located here in Mooresville, North Carolina, they, uh, they built one heck of a car. So uh, we, we knew it last year, this is the same car we had down there last year. And uh, it was really strong then. We uh, we had a mechanical failure there and um, took us out of that one, but uh, but we we qualified sixth at Daytona with it last year and third at Talladega, um, and so so we knew our, our car was strong. So we we came down there and um, and had a solid test, had a uh, had a had a had a solid week this entire past week. Uh, really good in practice, really good in qualifying, and. Uh, and the qualifying was it was a big reason why we were able to win on Saturday. We uh, we we started second, and, and I think we stayed in the top one or two for ninety percent of the race. And um, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know, in, in these ARCA races, sometimes you can get the top groove moving, sometimes you can't. 
Um, we we had some passes for the lead, but uh, but it seemed like he needed to be up front to do it. It it seemed like he, he couldn't be um, he couldn't be way you know past tenth or twelfth place and uh, and keep the outside moving for that long. So so I think the track position was uh, was a big key to our success. Well, now, we kind of noticed that a little bit, too, Grant, watching the ARCA race, and we watched, of course, you know, the Sprint Unlimited and the different practices and stuff. It seemed like the higher line doesn't have the speed like it used to. Yeah, you know, and I think it's all dictated on what rules package they, they bring, you know, during what year. But uh, it seems like for the for the last few years in these ARCA races, it, it's um, it's tough to, to, get, to get enough people on the outside to – to keep it going now now sometimes it does work but it, it's just a guess you know um if you if you got enough good cars it'll stay out there and, and usually if they if they keep the inside line on there real tight if they don't go up towards the wall if they keep it more towards the middle of the track it seems like it'll roll for a little while and then uh and then people want to get back down to the bottom and when they do that that top lane just stalls out and, and if you're up there you you're looking for a hole to get on in the bottom and, and, and you usually can't um, but, uh, but luckily for us, we, we had really good track position the, the, the whole day. We had a really good Roush Yates engine that, um, that, that really was flawless for us. Uh, that, uh, that, that's about half of your, your battle when you go down there. You, you got bodies and you got motors. And if you don't have that at Daytona or Talladega, you don't have anything. So no. we, we were able to, to have really good equipment and, um, and, and able to show what it could do. And now, of course, another thing we heard too, Grant, you know, that 150 or 60 time champion, we've done lost count, you know, Frank Kimmel, he was sitting there talking a little bit about to the restrictor plate package that the ARCA cars had because he said it seemed like it was a little bit maybe more restrictive. I mean, did you feel that when you was out on the track? He, what what he was kind of talking about is ARCA in an effort to, to kind of even out the playing field is giving the old style motors, um, a little bit of a plate advantage over the new style motors, which um, they, they did that to, to keep people from having to uh, lease. I mean, people were paying thirty, forty thousand dollars to lease an ARCA engine just for one race, and, and it doesn't wow. make any sense at all. So ARCA has gone to to um, to try to give the old style motors some motors that that people own. Um, a chance to, to run with these high dollar uh, for a Ford the, the new style motors the FR9 for the Chevy it's R07 um, they're, they're letting these old style motors be able to compete with them again um, and, and I don't think there, there is necessarily an advantage to the old style motor they can more or less just kind of even out the playing field so um, I, I think there, there's always going to be controversy for, for all that stuff when you go to to, to these restricted plate races because it does mean so much. Uh, like I said, um, the the body and the motor is is I mean that's that's most of your weekend down there. Either you you show up and, and you got a good body and a good motor and you have a good weekend, or you, or you show up and you got a bad one and, and you have a bad weekend usually. <laughs> Yeah, arrow and, and and the motors, everything at the restrictor plate tracks. And Grant, I got a question uh, about the track itself. It's been uh, uh, some years now since Daytona's got its repave, and you guys have been driving on it every year. Is the track starting to work in any at all? Is the asphalt starting to mature some? Yeah, I believe the asphalt is, but the way the ARCA cars are restricted um, with the horsepower and the the way the the rule. The way the, the whole ARCA package is right now, handling really isn't an issue. All these cars handle good when, when they got four tires on there that, that have air in them, it seems like. Um, you know, it, it's not like uh, I ran on the track one time before it had been paid. It's nothing like it was was then. Um, but, but the fact that, you know, we're basically running less than half of the horsepower there that we, that we normally run with these ARCA cars, um, and the banking so high, there's there's just there's really not a grip issue right now, unless somebody's doing something just really really crazy setup wise. So um, it, the the track is working in, but it's just it's just not coming into play as far as tire management or anything like that right now. 
Now, Grant, let me, ask, let me ask you a little bit about this, Grant. Yes, yeah, slow down, Andy. It's okay. Calm down. All right? <laughs> Calm down. Let me ask you a little bit about this, of course. Now, we heard about some of the, I guess you could call it the fiascos and, and you know, in the, you know, pre, you know, pre-qualifying, pre-race, post-race, all this other stuff. What did you see that was going on down there? Because, I mean, I heard all sorts of stuff was going on, of course, with, you know, Bobby Gearhart talking about an illegal U-boat and, and I mean, just, just all sorts of weird stuff, but they didn't catch the first inspection. What did you see down there? Well, I more or less saw an effort on, on ARCA to, to try to eliminate some of, some of the, the, the more or less cheating that, that, that goes on there. And I kind of hate to say cheating because to be honest with you, if, if they wanted to, to disqualify any car it, it either Talladega or Daytona, they pretty much could. There's, um, the the problem is there's so many rules that are you know, judgment rules that it's it's hard to say this this guy is is legal and this guy is not. Um, so I think I think some of them are just pushing that envelope too far, and um, and and they they got caught. You know, I I, I didn't I wasn't underneath any of the cars that they got thrown out. I I heard. You know, little bits and pieces, and and I, I never actually saw any of the parts or held any of them or anything like that. But, but the, the way the rules are, are structured, and this isn't just in in Arcus and NASCAR too. Um, that that you have to push them to be able to compete, yes. especially your Daytonas and Talladegas, and you know, all these crew chiefs are getting paid a lot of money to put fast race cars on the track. And and there's 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 just too much judgment and not enough black and white rules in 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 the the rule book right now. So I know some of them was the, either the right front or the left front spring. But the way it sits in the perch, it, it's supposed to it's supposed to sit and and have 260 degrees touching on the bottom. It. It doesn't have to, or 270 degrees, I think, is the rule. It doesn't have to be touching all the way around, but it has to be touching most of the way around. Well, <laughs> one person, you know, looks at that and thinks it's right, and the next person looks at it and thinks it's wrong. So, and, and you also have people that are that are going way beyond, you know, and and um, and I, I feel like I don't want to say say it the wrong way, but I, I feel like they're trying to crack on the crack down on the ones that are just taking it too far but uh but like i said i, I wasn't underneath any of the cars I didn't, I didn't actually see it for myself but but i think ark is trying to make an effort to, to straighten some of it out now of course and it falls into the old adage too you know if you ain't cheating you ain't racing or something like that you know but we see it a lot you know of course we've seen it before the sprint unlimited practice when we had you know of course even six time jimmy johnson you know was like a thousandth of an inch off on you know, one of the A pillars or something. And I mean, they they stopped him, and as far as the suspension goes. But you know, still there were a lot of controversy, and of course, a lot of controversy on Facebook and different you know blogs, things like that. They were saying, you know, that that maybe it wasn't unfair. But then again, too, you know, like I said, if you ain't pushing the limit, then you ain't racing. Yeah, yeah, and there, everything is so much more important in these two tracks, Daytona and Talladega. That um that all that little stuff really really adds up and and you you might have ten thousand rules in the rule book and these crew chiefs are gonna gonna try to push anything they they feel like they can get away with and, and like the Argus series I, I want to say they they maybe have fifty officials there with us and each one of them has as you know something they're checking and these crew chiefs are good they're they're trying to to work on the stuff they aren't checking it and uh and I think a little bit of the controversy was they they check these cars harder after qualifying um, than they did before the race, and I think I think people in crew chiefs alone were were kind of uh, getting used to Arca just checking it once beforehand, and maybe these guys go back to the garage and work on it some more or something like that. And I uh, and like I said, I think that's what what Arca is trying to crack down on. So at the end of the day, it um the the guys got caught and um and and it's part part of it. So we um, we were fortunate. We we did didn't have any didn't really have any issues in tech all all week. Um, had a had a good practice. Everybody uh, everybody with Team BCR did their job, and we were able to to come out on top. 
No doubt, Grant. And buddy, I tell you what, we're looking forward to see you more in Victory Lane in 2014. But now we've got to step out of here. Now, you know, you got to yell those three famous words, you know, make sure the neighbors hear it, you know, wake the cats up and things like that. You got to scream burning rubber, baby, top of your lungs. All right. All right. Well, I need to plug uh, K-Side Motor Honey Advanced Auto Parts, Worth USA, and Stanley Industries as well. If it wasn't for them, we, we wouldn't be here. But, uh, awesome. but yeah, I'm, I'm all about burning some rubber. <laughs> Woo, folks, that's Grand Infinger, winner of the ARCA race. Hang out. We'll be right back, and we'll talk with Patrick Staropoli right after this. Hi, I'm Mickey for Bed Bug Detection Services. Bed Bug Detection Services rescues dogs from the Humane Society and the SPCA, then trains them at the Florida Canine Academy. We then pair them up with a handler, where they will spend the rest of their lives in a happy family home working in the community. We want to rescue our second dog, but we cannot do it without your help. We are fundraising to bring home our next canine. Please go to bbds.us, that's bbds.us, and do your part in helping us rescue another dog. bbds.us will give life, home, and a meaning to another dog. bbds.us. With every donation, you will receive a signed postcard from our current bed bug detection dog rescue, Lily. Go to bbds.us. And thank you. If you're a gearhead, you probably go online to those hot rod superstores, drooling over the chrome and speed goodies until you find just the right item for your muscle car, tuner car, or truck. But what do you do when it comes to fixing the mom mobile? If you're like most do-it-yourselfers, you head to the strip all parts store and talk to the do you want fries with that kid behind the counter. Hold on, Bunky! Did you stop to think where those chain stores are getting the parts that you're installing in the vehicle that's used to transport your family everywhere? They get the cheapest suppliers they can find to sell you the parts at bargain prices. Their limited lifetime warranties? What a joke! Remember the last time mom's car broke down? You heard about that one for weeks. Don't take that chance again. Excelsior Racing has the quality parts you need for your family vehicle. Parts that you can install knowing you're getting the best for your family. Excelsior Racing. Quality parts. Personalized service. Affordable pricing. Fast to you direct. Excelsior Racing. Online at ExcelsiorRacing.com or call 502-909-2034. Ginger Williams Chevrolet Buick GMC is your Lexington, Kentucky, and Corbin Chevy Buick and GMC authority. From pre-owned to the newest models, Ginger Williams is the only place to shop in the Lexington area. Check out their website for your next new or pre-owned vehicle, www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. All of the full-line inventory of in-stock and on-order Buicks, GMC trucks, and Chevrolets are right there online. Plus, you can check out what's hot at Tincher Williams on the homepage. Schedule your service appointment. Browse the inventory. Look for Tincher Williams specials. Check out your financing options. See what GM incentives are being offered for your vehicle. You can even shop for new tires at their convenient online tire store and get directions from wherever you are right there. It's all online at www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. That's Tincher Williams Chevrolet Buick GMC, located in London, Kentucky. Your Lexington and Corbin Chevrolet. Chevy Buick and GMC Authority. You're listening to Burning Rubber Radio. Now back to the radio team that has no problem kissing your radio edit to get an interview. Hey, welcome back to Burning Rubber Radio, everybody. We are Kentucky's original hot rod radio show. Andy DeLay back with Charles Robinson. And we got someone that's driving a hot rod at Daytona this week. None other than Mr. Do- what was that you called him, Charles? Dr. Champion? Was that it? Dr. Champ, Andy. That's it, Dr. Champ. Patrick Staropoli, and folks, in case you didn't know it, Patrick Staropoli won the Peak Challenge last year, and Michael Waltrip Racing is doing all kinds of cool stuff with him. And Patrick, how are you doing, buddy? Hey, guys. How you doing, man? Yeah, good, man. We got to check in with you. Uh, you finished 11th out at New Smyrna, right? Was that where you were at? Yeah, yeah, that's where we were at last night. I heard, I heard you had Grant Enfinger on before me, man. This is a tough act to follow right now, considering his win the other day. Yeah, man, but now you're fixing to do it to it. I heard you were running the car through Tech today at Daytona. Tell us a little about what's uh, going on, buddy. Yeah, definitely. We uh, we ran New Smyrna last night. That was the first race of the K&N season. And uh, we had a good car in practice over the weekend. We fought some some problems with the, uh, the motor and got all those straightened out. Uh, we were fifth and seventh in the two practices that we ran. And in qualifying, just had some issues with the tires. And we ended up pretty far in the back down there in 24th. But... The race started, green light came on, and we, we just started marching to the front. We had a really good car. Uh, we passed more cars than anybody else, I think, and uh, ended up at 11th at the end, and we were still coming forward at that point. So, you know, just 
we needed the race to be a couple couple extra laps there at the end and squeeze in that top 10 and keep moving forward to the front. But it was a blast. I mean, ton of ton of cars showed up uh, for that race at New Smyrna. We have just as many, many signed in at Daytona. We just went through pre-tech today and everything and uh, yep. ready for the battle at the beach tomorrow. So battle at the beach, isn't that the one last year? I can't think of his name, Charles. Who was the guy that was crying when uh, Steve Park dumped him at the end? Oh, man. Oh, I can't remember either. That's got yeah. Anyway, everyone else are probably all over the website reminding me who it is. But I tell you, when you win tomorrow night, buddy, you got to yell "burning rubber" in, in victory lane. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, that'll be the first thing I say when I get out. And uh, that was Mike Stefanik, I think you're talking about. <laughs> That's it, Mike Stefanik, man. Great guy. Yeah, the this- guy's a, a legend when it comes to running these yeah. things, man. Uh, but Absolutely. I tell you, how are you feeling about the car for uh, Daytona? I'm feeling really good. I, you know, I, I'm so, I'm just uh, still trying to get over the fact that we started in such a hole last night because I think we had a had a really good car at New Smyrna, and you know we're taking the same one today. Tone, I had a few donut marks on them, rubbed them off today with some WD40, and you know we're ready to go. So, uh, never been on this track before. We haven't tested on anything like it, but it's a nice flat track, a little over a third of a mile, which reminds me a whole lot of Hialeah Speedway, which is where I grew up racing at. So, uh, you know, I, it's similar to it, and I think we'll have some uh, some good skills going into it. Well, we know that you're the doctor. We know you got it under control, so we're not worried about that, buddy. <laughs> yep. Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about a little bit about this K&N car, man. Of course, now, overcoming adversity and stuff, and of course, you know as a racer, that's one of the things you're going to have to do, kind of figure out the quirks of the car and things going on. But I tell you what, man, that was a huge accomplishment because, I mean, basically with what you're running, that's basically a new team in a way. Yeah, I mean, all the guys we have on the crew are really good. Um, you know, they kind of just all got assembled together this year. Some of them uh, haven't worked on cars before. The other ones, you know, have some experience. So we're trying to just get everyone to gel together right now. Um, I'm working with Dwayne Norris, my crew chief. He's the same guy I worked with uh, for the last two races last year. And, you know, kind of everyone's coming together, figuring out what they need to do. Uh, each day we work together, it gets smoother and smoother, like today when we went through tech. So. Uh, to take those guys to have the motor problems we had. We also had some sway bar issues over the weekend. We fought through a lot of adversity. I mean, the guys tried to come over here from California, and their plane broke down. They drove all night from Atlanta to get to the track at 6 a.m., so they didn't even sleep one of the nights. So, you know, we, we got put through our paces this weekend. Everyone uh, banded together, and you know, we ended up ha- having a pretty good run. Uh, now, who's crewing the car for you this weekend now at Daytona? And who, you got them pretty much have the same crew? Yeah, yeah, same exact crew. Everybody stayed down here, and we're just uh, working through through tomorrow night you got some more runs of course with uh bill McAnally racing later on this year right buddy yeah we have a lot of exciting races coming up uh bristol on march 15th is going to be huge i think uh we run right after the nationwide race if they, they keep the same schedule as last year so i'm really excited to get to bristol uh the week after that we're going all the way to the west coast for irwindale and then in may i think we're running iowa which everybody i talk to says that's one of their favorite tracks to, to race on really wide and, you know, really competitive when you have the multiple grooves going on there. So yeah. I'm really excited to get to all those tracks. But first, uh, kick butt at Daytona tomorrow, man. That's the plan. Yeah, we cannot wait to see how you do at Daytona. Charles, this is kind of weird. You know, we got Patrick on the phone. We're interviewing him. But a lot of the times he's in here in the studio with us interviewing everyone else. It's kind of neat, ain't it? Well, it is kind of neat because he actually brings some actual talent to the show. <laughs> 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 that's the that's the god honest truth bob don't get upset you do good turning the dials back there no bro. i thought that was hysterical now patrick there's the one thing about it though buddy you mentioned irwindale you mentioned bristol you're going to have to get on with i racing sometime and let us set something up for those tracks man so you can get some you know video seat time yeah, we really need to do that. I actually should have let you guys know last week. I was I was staying up in North Carolina the last few weeks getting the Bristol car ready um, at Bill's yep. eShop, and I was staying with your buddy Joey Coulter, and he has iRacing. So I, I was logging the laps on New Smyrna on there, and uh, I probably need to get on there for Bristol and Iowa and Irwindale. So I'll let you know next time I'm up there. Oh, oh so that's, yeah. that, that was why Joey was putting the hater button on me and wasn't speaking to me. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> he gave me the microphone and he said, here, you can talk to these people if you want to, but they might not have anything nice to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Patrick, what are you thinking? Now, Joey Coulter, coach folks that don't know, Joey Coulter drives in the Camping World Truck Series and he's a good friend of the show. What do you think about that setup that he's got? Joey's got a real nice eye racing setup. Yeah, it's a really cool setup. He's got the wheel connected um, with the pedals, like in a whole frame structure and everything. Uh, you know, it mimics the race car as close as you could possibly have. And that was kind of the first time I spent 
a lot of time on the iRacing deal. And uh, I found it really similar, you know, having run a lot of laps at New Smyrna before uh, as far as comparing the track to the video game. And, you know, it helped me feel like I had some seat time coming into this weekend. So he, he has a really cool setup. You ain't kidding, man. And I only wish that I could have a setup like that. Charles, maybe when you move down here, man, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you borrow some space in my house and you, you, can, you can build something like that for me. As big as you are, Andy, there's not much space left. I'd have to probably put it on the roof or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord we can man. get you a big boy seat from somewhere man i'm gonna find something else it. <laughs> man, we'll they, it yeah that's the truth and then folks too everyone out there listening we're gonna be po- following of course patrick he's part of the show but we're gonna be following him when he's in the race car especially at auburn down and patrick gotta tell me when you're over there because charles and i both are gonna be there bugging the heck out of you absolutely man we got there's a, quite a few late mile races at auburn Dale this year we just gotta get the car put back together and find some, some room in between these K&N races and, and make it on over there. We usually have some really good runs at Auburndale, so it would be a pleasure yeah. to have you guys out there. You know what? And thanks, by the way. You know what else? I've been bugging Joey Coulter trying to get him to let me run that number 16 truck that runs out there at Auburndale. That his uh, fiance, <laughs> congratulations, Joey, if you're listening, by the way. Uh, Jessica Green has been running out there. Why don't you drop a word for me? Because I want in that 16 truck, bud. That's a pretty good ride to get in, man. I'll put in a word to Joey for you and see what he says. Yeah, he, don't try to stay with them because they'll throw you out of the house when you. <laughs> yeah, he'll probably say he's I'll not going to be Christmas way or squeeze big in the in there. That's what. That- <laughs> yeah. Oh well, listen, Patrick. We wish you the best of luck, buddy. And we're gonna uh, check in and make sure where you finished. And don't forget, I can't wait. I'm gonna push the record button for the win this weekend or this uh, here coming up in the few days, and we'll hear about the the burning rubber baby. Is you shout out, but you can't leave without yelling it right now, buddy. <laughs> yeah, of course. Give me about five seconds because I'm sitting in my car in a parking lot, and there's some people walking by on the sidewalk. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'd like to fill this time by saying I want to thank Peak Motor Oil and everybody at Bill McAnally Racing for uh, for putting us on track this weekend. And we're clear now. So, run it over, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, that's Patrick Star of Foley, folks. Hang out. We're going to be back with a Daytona preview with Charles Robinson and I right after this. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. No words exchange, no time to exchange. No Hello, this is Dave from the Dave Matthews Band for Rad. When you go out and party, get drunk, then drive, you're not only loaded, you're a loaded weapon. When you celebrate, designate. Choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. What would you say? Media sales professionals with agency experience. If you're frustrated with your current position, unrealistic quotas, and inept management, If you're a sales machine and you simply will not take no as an acceptable reply. If you're looking for a rapidly growing company with unlimited sales potential for commissions in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you're searching for a high-tech, forward-looking, laid-back, but extremely professional organization who appreciate your skills and dedication, we have your next opportunity. Scorpion Radio Group is building a sales team of self-starters who are motivated. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444 or email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. That's 717-749-0444 and ask for Sue. It's Burning Rubber Radio, an excuse for the hosts to get out of the house on the weekends without having to explain to their wives, husbands, and girlfriends what they're really doing. Now, here are your hosts. Ooh, that's right. Welcome back to Burning Rubber Radio, everybody. Welcome back. We are about ready to talk NASCAR and the whole Speed Weeks thing this week. Charles, you ready to go, buddy? I'm always ready to go, man. As soon as I drop the green flag, I'm ready. Yeah, and talking about the green flag, of course, we've already had the Sprint Unlimited. I think that's what it's called. Turned into a wreck fest at Denley, Denny Hamlin won this week. And, of course, we got the number three back on the pole again. What do you think about Austin Dillon and that three? I think that's great, but you got to look also to, you know, Richard Childress pretty much is always strong at Daytona and you got to, you got to be put a big shout out to Ryan Newman. I mean, he came out there and he was outside pole sitter for a long time out there. And I thought for a while that he was going to be the one out there and you got to look to Brian Scott driving the number 33 car. He was, 
yeah. he was strong too. So all Richard Childress cars out there were very, very strong. Yeah, it wasn't. Now, Charles, I haven't asked you, are, are you cool with seeing that three up front like that? Or are you cool with the three being back in uh, uh, Sprint Cup? Well, I'm going to put it to you like this. You know, I respected the number three. I respected Dale Earnhardt. And, of course, everybody out there that's a NASCAR fan did. The way I look at it is, is it's a time for healing. That number was driven by more than Dale Earnhardt. You know, you had Ricky Rudd drove it. You even had Richard Childress drove it. So technically, that number made famous by Dale Earnhardt was driven by a lot of other people. So glad to see it back on the track. You know, that would be like saying, you know, uh, we're not going to run a seven anymore because Alan Kowicki, you know, that was his number. Or, you know, we're not running a number 28, you know, because of uh, Davey Allison. You know, that's, you can't do that, folks. You have to have healing. You have to move it on. He's held it off the track long enough. You know, it's time for his grandson to make a legacy with that number. Yeah. Uh, now, my personal feeling is is that I actually tried to contact Richard Childers with this. Of course, how he didn't take my call. But anyway, uh, I think that the three, like you said, it's a number. It needs to be back in the sport. I just wish that Richard would have brought that number back in a different font and a different style of number, not the same style of number that we're, see, that we're used to seeing Dale Earnhardt drive it in. But that's just me. Uh, I, do, I don't care, honestly, about the number. I don't think it should have been retired, and I'm happy with that. But uh, there's something else moving, shifting gears here, too. Is uh, I saw a quote that said, Jeff Gordon, if he wins the championship this year, he's going to retire. I think he's set to retire anyway pretty soon. What about you? I think he is, you know, that's kind of been in the rumor mill for, you know, a couple, three years. They've been talking about it. You know, he's, he's, I think he's wanting to relax a little bit more, maybe even going into the ownership role, because you got to remember he's half owner in the 48 car. So you're looking there. That's, that's a dynasty in itself. And there's no doubt within the next, if not this year or next year, he's going to have his seventh championship. And I'm done calling, you know, Jimmy Johnson, as long as, Chad Knauss is with him, and as long as he is healthy, you're going to probably see your next eight-time champion. It'll oh, be. Yes. J- Jimmy Johnson, and I'm not a big fan of anyone right now ex- in NASCAR, except maybe Joey Coulter and uh, Justin Lofton, who ain't probably going to run this year a whole bunch. But but when it comes to uh, – when it comes to having a favorite, you know, I don't have one in Sprint Cup. But, folks, I don't care what you think. You are watching a legacy. You are watching something that does not happen that often when it comes to Jimmy Johnson and Chad Kanas. These two right here, it, it's it's just the ultimate combination. You got the crew chief that can walk the line in the gray area so much that NASCAR it goes crazy trying to figure out how to tell the guy you can't walk this much in the gray area even though he doesn't violate the rules. Um, he's awesome, and when he does, they suspend him. And then you got Jimmy Johnson. You don't win championships without talent. The guy knows how to race. However, Charles, there's a couple of – of, of different things this year for Jimmy to look at and defending his championship. Number one, there's a new qualifying style. Everyone's out on the track. And then number two, we have the new sprint. Uh, what is that? The uh, chase later on in this year. What do you think of that? I don't really care about the 16 people in the, in the chase. What they're doing is they're basically, to me, it kind of looks like NASCAR is trying to bring up enough drivers. They know it that are averaging in the top 10, 15, caliber that are also sponsors i i think it's a money thing myself uh but you also uh, you got to add the spoilers in here and, and i don't think a lot of people are encompassing one thing here and i'll just say it out loud jgr uh, yeah. you got denny hamlin that's got something to prove this year you definitely got kyle bush that definitely wants to prove something and you've also got the other spoiler is going to be tony stewart because now tony stewart has been setting himself up you know he's been resting he's been out of the car He's healed up. His team has got something to prove also, and I wouldn't doubt that if at the end of the year you ain't got to watch for smoke winning another championship. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Tony Stewart, uh, you, you can't rule him out. And then moving off into the truck series, uh, Charles, which you, both you and I are big fans of, and Burning Rubber Radio is known to cover truck series last year. By the way, had all the winners of the races on Burning Rubber Radio. Yay, Just ringing our own bell there. But anyway, you got guys like Ben Kennedy that's in Turner Scott Motorsports equipment for his first full season. And then – you have, uh, of course, Matt Crafton is going to be defending his championship. 
And uh, Ron Hornaday, I do believe, is going to be in Turner Stott equipment. What do you think about the truck race this Friday? I think the truck race is going to be pretty much awesome. You know, you can't count out Turner Scott Motorsports. You know, you definitely can't count out Thor Sport because you've got Matt Crafton, who's got finally got a taste of his first championship. He's not going to take down lightly and, and not win another championship. He's, he's going to run hard and he's going to be strong. But, but it's a guessing game. You've got a lot of new guys with new teams. You've got new equipment out on the track. So it, it's going to be hard to judge until after Daytona. Then you can start seeing who's starting to jail and who's not. Yeah, I agree, and and I think one of the biggest um, the biggest threats to Matt Crafton this year, of course, everyone. Before I get into this, they got totally redesigned trucks. Spoilers moved up an inch from the back of the truck, so it's a whole new package. But I say that Johnny Sauter is going to be the person to watch out for. So, uh, yep, yeah, definitely. Anyway, folks, uh, you know what it's time for, Charles. It's time for us to eat. And it's time for the NASCAR chef, John Dix, who's with us. How you doing tonight, John Dix? Hey, guys. Burn rubber, baby. Woo! Burn it rubber, baby. <laughs> Did everybody enjoy that a wreck fest Saturday night? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, come on now. You know you know, it was the hottest ticket in Daytona. That ARCA yeah. race is even better. <laughs> Definitely was, man. You going to be down there cooking for smoke? Uh, no, they texted me the other day and said they ran out of hot passes. So uh, they're scrambling right now trying to find something for me. But I told them I'll be there if they still need me. But, you know, we're still working on something full time. So uh, we'll see what happens. Everybody wants to go to Daytona. So when you're just the uh, part time cook, you're way low on the totem pole. But, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, let's hear what you got for us tonight, buddy. Okay, guys, if you got some of that leftover chicken that Andy enjoyed so well last week, I got a chicken broccoli casserole that you can use your leftover chicken with. It's done gone. I heard about that. <laughs> You're going to start with two cups of uh, chicken. You want to use some leftover chicken or chicken breast. If you don't have it, you want to cook it and, and cut it up. One package of frozen broccoli uh, cuts, which is usually about, about 30, 40 ounces, what most of them come in. You got um, two cans of um, cream of mushroom soup, one can of evaporated milk, one and a half cups of cheddar cheese, shredded cheddar cheese, and one carton of French fried onions. All right? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to combine the broccoli, the soup, the uh, milk, the uh, and one cup of the cheddar cheese. Now, just use half of it and stir in the uh, stir it all in the chicken together. Put it in a grease pan, uh, like a good baking dish, from about 13, use it about 13 by 9 and a half or about 2 inches deep. And you want to bake it at 350 for about 30 minutes. Then you want to remove it from the oven and sprinkle the other uh, half of the uh, cheese on top of it and cook it again for about 10 more minutes. And I tell you what, it's a great leftover recipe. It's real quick. And you can sit down and listen to Burning Rubber Radio and eat it. Woohoo, man. I cannot wait to get back up with you, John. <laughs> And have some more of your good old cooking, buddy. And folks, if you want to ask John Dix a question or anything, you can always drop a line to burning.rubber at hotmail.com or uh, go on the Facebook page, Burning Rubber Radio. And John sometimes get around, he gets around and puts his recipe up on the Facebook page. And uh, when you do, John, we all appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, man, Andy, I tell you what, I've, uh, it's been on there pretty often lately. I've been putting it about every week for the last couple months. So, um, uh... Uh, I, I've been behaving myself. That's all right, man. But you can't get out of here, John. We need to hear the season kickoff. Burning rubber for me, baby. Burning rubber, baby. Woohoo! <laughs> John Dix, folks. And uh, hang out. We're going to be right back with some more Burning Rubber Radio and Charles Robinson's Hot Air right after this. Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed. Learn how at www.ready.gov. Brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Ad Council. We're growing like crazy and need account reps who know their way around agencies, the internet, and social media. Got connections? Or do you know how to get to the decision makers? Are you fearless? We need you. Internet radio, or as we call it, wireless mobile radio, is rapidly becoming the place to be with almost limitless income potential. So contact us to get involved with the fastest growing professionally produced group of internet radio stations in the world. Your imagination is the only limit here. 
Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or you can email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue, shopping around for your racing gear, driving from store to store only to find they don't have what you want? Barter's Racing Collectibles on Black Gap Road in Fayetteville, Pennsylvania, has it all. The hottest NASCAR, IRL, and NHRA diecast, T-shirts, jackets, flags, and more. Everything racing. Stop by or check out their website, www.partnersracing.com, or call 717-352-2782. You'll be surprised at the selection, prices, and friendly client service. UPS, FedEx, and USPS shipping available. Farners Racing Collectibles, www.farnersracing.com, or call 717-352-2787. Farners Racing Collectibles, where racing comes alive. You're listening to Burning Rubber Radio. Evidence that with enough money and a lot of BSing, almost anyone can have their own radio show. Now, back to Burning Rubber Radio. Oh, my Lord. We're back with Burning Rubber Radio. Andy DeLay along beside Charles Robinson and Bob Steele. Uh, giving you the kick off the 2014 NASCAR Speed Week show. Guys, uh, we're talking a little bit about NASCAR, talking about the truck series and all that stuff. Real quick, wanted to tell everyone here what uh, the schedule was. And, of course, our first airing of the show is going to be on Wednesday. So uh, for you folks on Wednesday, they got practices for Camping World Truck Series, uh, Sprint Cup Series, on Wednesday. Thursday is going to be a uh, practice for the Nationwide Trucks and the Truck Series, of course, again. And uh, they got a, uh, excuse me, Thursday the 20th at 7 p.m., they got the Budweiser Duels, the 60 laps or 150 miles. And, of course, uh, final practice will be on Fox Sports uh, for the Truck Series. Then on Friday, of course, you got the NASCAR Cup Series practice, followed by the Nationwide uh, qualifying at 105. That's going to be on ESPN2. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series practice is on Fox 1 following uh, NASCAR Nationwide Series. And, of course, at 4.05 Eastern Time, the trucks go out and do their qualifying. And at 7.30, the race that really means something to me is the Next Era Energy Resources 250. It's 100 laps, 250 miles on Fox Sports 1. And I don't know about you, Charles. Is that the race that means anything to you? Oh, that's always the race that means something to me. Of course, you know, we are all favorite of the trucks, but I'm going to be kind of interesting to see about Sprint Cup now. That was one of the things I kind of wanted to mention earlier. You're not noticing the two-car breakaways and stuff. You're starting to see pack racing, yeah. but you're also starting to see cars snap loose just all of a sudden. You've seen what happened to Jimmy Johnson, so I think the new rules package is going to be kind of interesting. Yeah, it's got to do with that spoiler, wouldn't you agree? The, the, the downforce stuff, buddy? I, it's a lot to do with the downforce and the spoiler, and I mean, but also too, there was some other different things that was changed a little bit. So, it, it's all going to be accumulation. I think you know, maybe by the Daytona 500, a lot of them will figure out that that extra loose thing, and they'll figure out what they need to do. Okay, and I agree with you, man. Now, real quick, talking about uh, the Sprint Cup Series race, Daytona 500 Sunday, uh, 1 p.m. Who is your pick for the Daytona 500, Bob? You know, I know this sounds like a long shot, but I'm going with Smoke. Wow, man, Smoke after the entry and everything. Charles, who are you thinking of? Again, I'm going to repeat back the, the famous word, be JGR. You got yeah. Kyle going out there strong. You know, the Toyotas have ran very, very strong. They run, of course, strong until a lot of them got took out of the, you know, the whatever the sprint race is. But anyway, uh, long story short, you got Denny Hamlin again. You know, he's always had a fast car all weekend long. The qualifying... If you'll notice, guys, you had a lot of fast cars up front, but those are cars that may not draft well, that can't overtake. They were probably running peak speed. You got guys that were running probably, you know, three tenths, four tenths, a little bit, you know, slower. But that's the kind of car that can suck up on you and pass you when you've got nothing. So Hamlin, or are you going with Kyle Busch, or what? I'm I'm going with either two of the. I mean, I I really, <laughs> I mean, because I mean the cars are so equal. Those guys have the same kind of driving style. You know, when they sit up out there and they run, and you've already seen Kyle, you know, he already ran down into the infield and came back out and was still running pretty strong. All right. I mean, that's just the way he is. Well, I'm going to step up to the pump, and I'm going to go with Kurt Busch. And I know I called him all year last year, but he's in strong stuff this year. Kurt Busch is my 
pick to win the Daytona 500. Hang out, folks. We'll be back with more Burning Rubber Radio after this. Ginger Williams Chevrolet Buick GMC is your Lexington, Kentucky, and Corbin Chevy Buick and GMC authority. From pre-owned to the newest models, Ginger Williams is the only place to shop in the Lexington area. Check out their website for your next new or pre-owned vehicle, www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. All of the full-line inventory of in-stock and on-order Buicks, GMC trucks, and Chevrolets are right there online. Plus, you can check out what's hot at Tincher Williams on the homepage. Schedule your service appointment. Browse the inventory. Look for Tincher Williams specials. Check out your financing options. See what GM incentives are being offered for your vehicle. You can even shop for new tires at their convenient online tire store and get directions from wherever you are right there. It's all online at www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. That's Tincher Williams Chevrolet Buick GMC, located in London, Kentucky. Your Lexington and Corbin Chevrolet. Chevy Buick and GMC Authority. Hi, I'm Mickey for Bed Bug Detection Services. Bed Bug Detection Services rescues dogs from the Humane Society and the SPCA, then trains them at the Florida Canine Academy. We then pair them up with a handler where they will spend the rest of their lives in a happy family home working in the community. We want to rescue our second dog, but we cannot do it without your help. We are fundraising to bring home our next canine. Please go to bbds.us, that's bbds.us, and do your part in helping us rescue another dog. bbds.us will give life, home, and a meaning to another dog. bbds.us. With every donation, you will receive a signed postcard from our current bed bug detection dog rescue, Lily. Go to bbds.us. And thank you. Ever hire, never quit. Lofty goals in this age of shoddy quality, corporate indifference, and built-in obsolescence. It's a beacon of light in a crowded field of mediocrity. The way a company is run is an indication of how you, the customer, is going to be treated. You have a lot of choices when you're searching for auto and performance parts online and at the corner parts store. So why should you buy from Excelsior Racing? Because they're simply the best online parts supplier in the business. If you're looking for selection, ease of ordering, cost and prompt delivery, look no further. If you have a question, our customer service hotline staffed by knowledgeable gearheads like you will ensure that you get what you need to fix or mod your car or truck. With a thousand suppliers, you're guaranteed to get what you need. First time, every time. Excelsior Racing. Excellence on the track. Excellence on the road. Excellence in customer service. Online at ExcelsiorRacing.com or call 502-909-909. 2034. Hey, did that guy just throw a taco wrapper out of his window and onto the track? Never mind. It's Burning Rubber Radio. Let's get back to the show. Woo, you are back with Burning Rubber Radio. Andy DeLay, Charles Robinson, and the one and only Mr. Bob Steele here uh, bringing you an hour of motorsports adrenaline. Folks, uh, I am all fired up for NASCAR this year. Charles, I know you are too, and Charles is soon to be hopefully down here in Florida with me, and we're going to be over there following the Mr. Dr. Champ Patrick Star Pulley at Auburndale. Right, bud? You got that right, man. We'll be right down there just eating out of their grills and you know getting run off again like we usually do. <laughs> you know it, man. And uh, it's going to be good to get into some local stuff. Of course, down here in Florida, we have the Soto Speedway. We have uh, Auburndale Speedway where Joey Coulter runs a lot, and, uh, Jessica Green, and, of course, Patrick Staropoli. Of course, a bunch of other folks here in Florida and Citrus County Speedway. Of course, we won't ever forget um, where Charles and I started up there in Corbin, Kentucky, and it's good to be on the air back up in that area at Corbin Speedway. Charles, you going to miss that place? Uh, no, probably not. But, you know, hey, I do miss the track and the folks and stuff. And, of course, now I've been talking to some of the guys I don't know if Corbin's going to be able to get up this year or not, man. Some pretty sad news. Man, that stinks. I know Corbin's gone through some, uh, if they've gone through some ownership changes and stuff, you got Burnside, of course, a dirt track up there and everything. Want to give a shout out to Mr. Jamie Mosley, uh, jailer in Laurel County, Kentucky up there. Of course, the NASCAR, uh, NASCAR nationwide series and truck series driver, a good friend of Charles and I, I want to get a big thumbs up and, He's going to be running for jailer again, I hear, over in Laurel County, Kentucky. So anyway, Charles, man, we're going to have a good show next week. Hopefully we'll be talking to the winner of the truck race and some other good stuff. But until then, you know, we go back out of here. Folks, thank you for listening to Burning Rubber Radio. Make sure to say hello to us on the Burning Rubber Radio Facebook page. Until next week, Andy DeLay, Charles Robinson, and Mr. Bob Steele all yelling, 
Burning rubber, baby. Woo. <laughs> Burning rubber, baby. Burning Rubber Radio is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network.com, a division of the Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated. This program may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash burning dash rubber dash radio, or go to the Performance Motorsports Network.com website and look for our landing page there. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect like those of the management and ownership of either the Performance Motorsports Network or the Scorpion Radio Group, or those of our advertisers and marketing partners. Be listening next week as we munch through four or five large pieces, half the salad bar, and at least a case of chilled adult beverages. Hey there! Huh? What about the guests and the motorsports coverage and all the other cool stuff they do? Oh, yeah, well, well. Now, come on now! And they do one hell of a show. Okay. For Burning Rubber Radio, I'm Cougar Michael. Burning Rubber, baby!